else towards the beginning would be great. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the today's Restaurant News Networking Meeting, 11 a.m. Uh, we are a group of vendors who are here to help each other grow our businesses and uh, also to help any owner, manager, or chef uh, with any questions or concerns they might have. Feel free to give us a call at 561-620-8888. And go to our website at trnusa.com and be sure to check out our YouTube channel at Today's Restaurant. We have over 300 videos there going back to 2017. And uh, I'm Howard Appel. I'm the founder and publisher of T Today's Restaurant News. And I'll be your host for today. Uh, Steve Geller is with us today. He works with Pam. So welcome back, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. So, and so. Uh, what, I, what I'd like to do today is do our regular intros. And then I have a, uh, as I put on the invitation, I have a topic that I think uh, is really interesting. It, it, we discussed it in the nine o'clock group and came up with some good ideas. And I think that this group will come up with some great ones. So, uh, Randy, why don't you start us off? Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Randy Pumputis here with Heartland Payroll. We are a publicly held payroll HR company. Uh, we specialize in the hospitality industry. Uh, proud to announce for South Florida, we have exclusive partnerships now with Launch Credit Union based up north. And also Bank of Tampa, which I'm heading over to right now. Um, special incentives for, you know, our, our restaurant tours. We work with anybody from startups, multi-locations, acquisitions, and of course, folks moving to the great sunshine state in Florida. I can be reached at 585-622-2993. Thank you. Okay. Uh Helen and Rob. Hi. Why don't you, why don't you go you up, up, up front today? Hi. Uh, we're Helen and Robert Gottesman. We're the founders of a nonprofit, Delicious Spoonfuls Florida Incorporated, where we train and employ people with special needs and get them off the couch where they have been sitting forever since high school. And we create jobs by going to events and creating events ourselves selling ice cream and soon more goodies for our guests to enjoy. And everything we do is kosher. We have an event this Sunday in Boynton Beach. We're very excited about. It's all about the Jewish disability uh, inclusivity. And that will be at the Boynton Rec Center. And we're looking for more events. If you know anybody in South Florida, looking for ice cream in their events or weddings or anything else, please give us a call. You can see our website at deliciousspoonfuls.org or call us at 561-676-2078. We'd love the opportunity to speak with you. It's also Helen at deliciousspoonfuls.org. Thanks. Hey, thank you. Uh, just as a way by way of introduction, uh, Helen and Rob were attending our meetings as uh, potential restaurant or catering people from the very beginning, before they even had a cart. And I think this group has been uh, instrumental. A lot of good contacts. In... A lot of brainstorming. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Darren, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Darren Gull with Tracy.net. Uh, we take the aches and pains out of phone and internet services. Uh, we are a master agent for all the carriers you would know, the Ring Centrals, 8x8, Nextiva, GoTo, Zoom, uh, Dialpad, and many more. So what we do is we do a, a full consultative approach where we come in and we actually analyze a person's business, see if there's any issues that they're having and the best way to address those issues. 
So um, we do have specific products for different industries. For the restaurant industry, a big push of ours is eliminating busy signals and not having to pay for lines you don't need, but maybe for a, a few minutes a day, a few hours a day during the rush times. So we can queue calls in the cloud to keep the calls down to what your staff can manage uh, and fully manage a solution for a restaurant. And our solutions start as low as $85 a month, including all hardware and the services. Know anybody who's struggling from the aches and pains of communications? Our online website is traci.net. That's an acronym for transmit, receive, and communicate information. You can email us at sales at tracy.net or call us toll free at 800 881 8899. We're here to serve you. Thank you. Gabby, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, Gabby with Worksite PEO. We are a full service uh, professional employer organization. What that means is that we will do all your HR outsourcing from payroll, payroll taxes, employee health benefits, workers comp, 401k, and HR consultation. We specialize in the restaurant and hospitality industry, uh, and we have the tools and the resources to help your company grow. Uh, from getting more capital into the restaurant with the FICA tip tax credit. Um, up to even partnering you up with uh, talent acquisition and um, any other tools that you might need for your restaurant growth. Gabby with Worksite PEO, 561-479-7474. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, Terry Ark, good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Terry. I uh, am the owner of Creative Business Impressions. I am in the promotional products industry, so I am the person that can provide products that keep that have your company name on um, to help your customers remember you. Um, not just handing them your business card, but, but handing them something that they're going to use. Um, I always like to show something new, just an idea, and you guys are probably really familiar with these. I'm sure you've seen bumper stickers. So I've got a few just to kind of give you just to add a little humor. Uh, this one says, dear math, I'm not a therapist, solve your own problems. You can put anything on a bumper sticker. So how many different things can you think of to put uh, about your restaurant? My number is 561-308-1393. Okay, uh, TRN Terry, good morning. Good morning, happy Friday. Um, and what I do is something that everyone here has pretty much taken advantage of at some time since we've been around in our 29 years, and that is to locate all over the place, uh, many sources and, and, uh, people that we have that we work with to find restaurants, bars, hotels, actually, yes, hotels and new places that are coming into Florida and or Georgia, and then we're starting to add Alabama. That goes into the Georgia list, not the Florida list. These are monthly lead reports. We have somewhere that I can guarantee 50 brand new leads every month, brand new, and it can go up as far last month it was at 80, I believe. So somewhere between 50 and all the way up every month, brand new leads. You'll get them by the 9th or the 10th of the month. Uh, in Georgia, it's about the 15th because we're so busy trying to put everything together and organize it. Um, those leads are everywhere in the process of signing a lease to looking for a space to just starting construction. And believe it or not, as big as this project is on like, how many acres was it? Like 200 acres. That uh, Great Wolf Lodge opening that gigantic indoor water park in Naples. They're going to be open sometime late this year. They're going to have gourmet restaurants, they are, which they haven't named yet. They have named a few that they're going to have. But that is actually a hotel that looks like log cabins. I don't know if anybody's been there or seen them. I'm sure you have. But... To have one in Naples, that's going to be a huge draw, I think, also for the restaurant show, because that's going to bring people down with their families 
it's not that far. They can stay there and then, you know, people can work the show. That's a vacation. But on that note, because because I just found out about it a couple of weeks ago, I didn't even know about it. And that's huge. Where I'll get the little place that so somebody will call and say, hey, Terry, this place is here. Come over here. The guy's waiting. So, you know, it'll be a little uh, some, something in the corner of a, a, a center or something. So I do have a lot of leads. I do have a lot of information, email addresses, phone numbers. Um, if anybody wants a sample, go ahead and send it. Send me your email and I'm happy to send it out. Terry at T R and usa.com thank you okay uh steve geller good morning hi good morning good morning so steve geller my company is leasing solutions i'm a long time uh equipment finance professional and um, i work with broker partners primarily uh one major partner of mine pam hewitt she couldn't be on the call today um, we provide equipment finance, uh, SBA loans, working capital, merchant cash advance. And uh, we work with startup uh, restaurants, existing businesses, and uh, um, we can help uh, you know anyone who needs financing. Pam's number down in uh, Florida and uh, St. Petersburg, you probably know PFC. Finance 813-531-0654. Uh, we're happy to to speak to anyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go to Azalea. Good morning. Good morning, team. My name is Azalea. I am a local business broker in South Florida. I do Miami and Broward. Um, so if you're looking to buy a restaurant, sell a restaurant, or my favorite, just lease it and avoid the drama. <laughs> Please give me a call. Um, my number. Let me see. Gotta gotta get my number. Uh, <laughs> my number is uh seven eight six uh four five seven twenty seven ninety six. Thank you guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh. <laughs> John Marinek, good morning. Good morning, John Marinek, Marinek Food Service Consultants. If you need a restaurant designed, we're the people to get. We design restaurants, um, anything with food. If you like to eat, we're the people to call. 954-817-1183. Thanks. You can always count on John when we're short on time. <laughs> 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 Uh, John Bond, good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Bond. I'm with the Bun Company. Uh, most people know us by going into bakeries and they see twine around their boxes or pork roast, beef roast, rotisserie chickens, literally anything you can think of, we tie. Uh, we now have 100% cotton twines that are strong enough for the industries. Um, we can secure your uh, delivery food service from drivers getting in and eating it. Unfortunately, today it's in excess of 80% of the drivers admit to eating the food they deliver. Um, let's secure your delivery foods. Let's, let's not let the drivers be your last taste testers. My number is 1-800-222-BUN. Our website is buntyco.com. And our email is info at buntyco.com. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chris. The rest uh, of your group deserted you. What's that? The rest of the group deserted you. Kevin has a lunch uh, date with his wife, and uh, I think Mulholland's in search of a new girlfriend. I don't know what's going on. You know. so, <laughs> anyway, uh, he posted something on Facebook about back out dating. So, I don't know. Uh, uh, anyway. So we are strategic supply chain partners. We function as an outsourced uh, purchasing department for our clients. Uh, we assist in negotiating uh, a vastly improved distribution agreements, uh, manufacturer direct pricing, deviated pricing, all the things that uh, go into getting the best possible uh, pricing for clients. Um, 
we typically on the low end save seven, eight percent on the high end. We have clients we've saved up to 15 percent or more uh, on their purchasing costs. We uh, uh, function um, as a, a contingency, uh, uh, meaning that we only make money if we actually find savings. Um, we have clients uh, from Detroit to the East Coast in the Washington, D.C. area in Florida and Texas uh, and Louisiana and working on expanding uh, throughout the, the uh, focus on the Southeast. Uh, great referral program. Our referral partners get 10 percent of everything we make for the life of any agreement we put in place. Um, and as always, our contact information is uh, posted at the end of the meeting. Again, strategic supply chain partners. Thanks. Okay. Um, I left Stephanie Stephanie towards the end today for a reason. Uh, hi, Howard. <laughs> I I want I wanted to to get tell us who you are, and then I wanted to get your take on what's going on now with uh, the. Uh, sub possible hacking of the telephone companies and I heard today the uh, pharmacy supply chain. So, uh, excuse no, I'm sorry, is that what happened yesterday? I'm sorry. Is that what happened yesterday? I is saw the... that there was an outage, but yeah, go ahead, Gabby. Because I, I didn't have a phone until like one o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know if that's um, if anyone knows exactly what happened. I don't follow yeah. that. AT&T saying... did an update to their system and it went awry. It was rumored to be a lot of other things, but bottom line is they implemented something in their network without testing it and didn't have an undo command to, to undo what they did. So they're trying to restore things. So they basically broke all proper protocol when you make a network change. I mean, the only thing they did right is they did it at night as opposed to the middle of the day. But you do it at night so you can recover, and they did not recover. But there was a report this morning that uh, the, the uh, pharmaceutical industry has been uh, uh, so called attacked. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's daily, Howard. It's daily. People are attacking daily. I mean, yeah, it is. I know. I know. You have to get your prescriptions at least three months supply, no matter what you have to do, minimum. Well, because it's only going if... to. Uh, I had a conversation with um, his name. Oh, yeah. Uh, from Land Infotech. Right. And he was talking about the billions of hacking attempts at the large finance companies on a daily basis, and that they have uh, programs in place for people who want to become, uh, who want to work in the computer security industry, yeah. and that there are scholarships available. So we were talking about that too. I wish I was twenty years younger; I would go in for that because. Well that's what Stephanie yeah. does. So let's the... So some of the things that I just want to mm. tag on to what mm. Helen just mm. said quickly is mm. that I believe that mm. education should mm. set people up for mm. the needs in the environment right now. When kids are in, you know, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, mm. they should be taking courses for the type of industries that need the most attention in the next few years. Right. So we are finding out as a response that more security individuals are needed in the environment. But if we were more proactive, seeing kind of this trickling, you know, upward that's been happening for quite a while. But this is mm -hmm. why we have programs like Sentinel One. Sentinel One, let's just say that there's multiple computers on a network. If there's ransomware attack, it'll take that computer off the network preventing any further, you know, mm -hmm. connection to that person that, right. you know, basically once it's been detected, well, that won't person, catch the virus. Exactly. Yeah. That person can't proceed any further and that virus can't infect anybody else on the network that it hasn't touched already. Right. Yeah. So there's different preventative measures. And of course there's reactive measures as well. Now talking back to Darren, mm -hmm. what, what mm -hmm. Darren just said, I was just working and this is part of the reason why my voice is all raspy and a little bit tired. Two times in the last two weeks, I've done overnight data migrations for emails. 
and I stay up until I've done as much as I can, made all the backups. And I want to know that if all else fails, I can revert everything I just did to make sure that they're getting their email. And, you know, this morning, mm-hmm. even I was on mm-hmm. the line and I've got to go in person to someone who I, you know, is having trouble logging into their phone. The point of it is, is that whenever I'm about to do something as big as what I guess AT&T did, you know, I'm, man, my sister-in-law keeps trying to call, um, but I, I, you, you, there's protocols in place and there's a reason why protocols in place. And you would think something like AT&T would be right. as prepared as possible. But at the same time, I can tell you every time I've done an email migration, there has been something else that has held me up that didn't happen the first time. So as much as we can prepare, as much as we can, you know, whatever, but what they needed to probably have in place was the backups and the ability ability to revert to keep people off the network for as short a time as possible. Um, Now, when it comes to pharmaceuticals, you know, I mean, just the thing is, is any industry is at risk of being attacked. And, you know, one of the weird and interesting things about my industry is that I know if the internet goes down, you know, and I am not the one in control of the internet, and I mean, at some point, you know, this is, you know, a drug, maybe getting in my car, walking somewhere. I mean, the, 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 the network and the internet is the reason why everything else works. So, you know, it's, it's, we kind of have to respond to the best of our ability and we have to be prepared. Have your, you know, virus protection up to date run your updates on your Windows computers and your Mac computers. Um, you know, make sure to review the applications that are in your computer as often as possible. If you're in doubt, reach out. We work hard so you can continue working. So anything on your phone, any, I mean that, you know, obviously Apple or, you know, your phone provider can't fix, reach out. Anything on your desktop, laptop, tablets reach out we're happy to help we're happy to answer any questions and if we can't we don't know we will find out for you but some of these people that um because there was some sort of a breakdown like this is it because the system is overwhelmed or they're just inexperienced people working there or what what's what's the reason you know and some trying I, I was gonna say for at and they're trying to upgrade their network to a mm-hmm. different band that they purchased hardly mm-hmm. through the government. And in doing so, they broke something. So it, you know, it's the type of thing that if something got overlooked mm-hmm. and it happens, I mean, as Stephanie said, but the difference is, is to have mm-hmm. a backup plan for, okay, I, I call it contingency planning. Uh, you know, if, if something, you know, what if, you know, if I, if I do this right. and it breaks something, what is my recovery plan? And that's, you know, I think what got missed again with the cutting of corners. The only other thing I was gonna add to what you said, Stephanie, is have a password management program and never mm-hmm. use the same password for anything. Because that's how most hacks happen from the inside out. You know, someone right. brings in a compromised device. Someone, you know, uh, gets behind the firewall. You can have the best firewall in the world, but if somebody comes in with their phone and jumps on your Wi-Fi and their phone is compromised, your network is now compromised. So it's, you know, and that's what Steffi, uh, that's what they do. I mean, they can help you with those protections. And, you know, it's so, so, so important to be prepared for those types of things. And then also at cyber education, you know, in our company, we do weekly trainings on breaches and what to look for. And I can't tell you recently, I've been getting from one of my, what appears from one of my employees, hey, I changed my bank account information again. Can you please update my payroll information? You know, and it's like, and you have to look you know, they call it the slam message. You have to verify who is the sender, verify any links in the message. Um, you know, basically are the action they're asking you for is if something urgent, hey, do this right away, that's usually a, a sign it's a scam. And then the message itself, what exactly is, you know, the message, you know, what attachments do. I mean, verif- don't click on attachments unless you verify, like, this is coming from my employee's name, but a Gmail account, some random Gmail account. So you've got, you've got to really look you know, carefully to protect mm-hmm. yourself. And, and the two-step verification to log in is the really the safest way to go. Uh, Stephanie, um, 
she'll tell you, I, I believe that if you have a two-step authorization, like facial ID and then something else, because it doesn't matter. I mean, somebody could hold you at gunpoint and put your phone and you've got the face ID, but where's the second and, you know, you don't remember, whatever. But that two-step ID. And that time. is all good as long as your admin center for whatever that right? So if it's, let's say it's your email, right? And we're talking about your Microsoft admin center. That admin center holds the ability to reset that two-factor. Oh, so really? It's well, an you extra level of protection. It's not because your sign-in logs, whoever's managing, like, so for example, I manage, you know, quite a few companies, their email. And, you know, if they ever tell me that, hey, my spam emails have been increased or someone contacted me and said that I sent them an email that I didn't send. I just go right into their admin center. I go into their sign-in logs because that that can't be erased. That can't be changed. And I can see who's logged in, where they logged in from, what attempts. I can sign out of all sessions that you're currently logged into, change your password, reset your two-factor, and basically have everything set back up from the ground up for you only, and that knocks out anybody who might have, you know, breached. But there are there is um, a company that we work with, we partner with, that are security specialists. In the event of an actual breach, there are steps that must be taken, um, you know, depending on the kind of information that may have been uh, exposed. And we have specialists that kind of come in and, and help with that stage of it. You know, if it's just, you know, your business emails, I mean, I've had a couple people that have had a login and the information in their data isn't like, it's not socials. It's not, you know, anything that's extremely sensitive. So we were able to just, like I said, sign out of all sessions, change your password, reset your two factor, and then watch it, make sure that no one successfully logs in after that. Um, and that's the things that when you sign up for our um, hosted email so, uh, system, that that's the things that we can help with. Well, you're our go-to now. You already know that our 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 gateway guy is was ill, and we had him for 20 years. So he was he would come over here, and it would be done immediately, or do remote control, you know, of the TV take of the computers take over remotely. But yeah. um, definitely, okay. Thank you. Of course, yeah, and no. in order to reach us, we did update our website. We have some of our new services on there. It is still a work in progress. We have some other things that we're going to be adding, but brilliantcomputers.com. And then um, the office number for us is 561-877-1119. But the best way to reach us for any technical support requests at this time is support at brilliantcomputers.com. That'll open up a ticket. It'll text me. It'll send me an email. and I will get the message that you all need attention. So uh, support brilliantcomputers.com. Okay, thank you. I knew you I knew you would have some answers. Uh, we'll, we'll keep checking back over the coming months. Uh, I want uh, I'm Howard Appel. I'm the founder and publisher of today's Restaurant News since 1996. And I just want to mention that we're very excited about a new feature that's starting in our March issue. We're going to be featuring a different city in the country. I'm not sure what we're, what we're calling it yet, maybe Culinary City or Featured Culinary City, but we're starting off with uh, the city of Nashville, and we're going to feature Terry Lena's company, which is headquartered in Nashville. So they'll be uh, featured prominently on a two-page spread in the March issue. In April, we're going to feature Dallas and... Uh, after April, we will decide as we go along as to what city. So uh, we're Give excited us... about this. <laughs> Give us your thoughts, as long as it's not in Florida. Right. Uh, I was, I was uh, running through uh, some of the groups that I belong to on Facebook, and I came across a letter that was written to the group by a woman restaurant owner. I'm not going to give her name or the restaurant name right now, but I want to read the letter, and then I want to ask you for your suggestions 
for her. The letter reads, how would I increase sales for my restaurant? My restaurant averages 50 to $100 per person in sales and is considered fine dining. We get a surge of reservations during weekends or special occasions, but really suffer from lack of sales during ordinary days. What would be a good approach to bring in customers during these normal days? We have been op open for six months and scored 4.8 in reviews out of 130 reviews. So I don't think there's anything wrong with our service or our taste. Please help. My family is dependent on this business. That sounds like a pretty serious request. So I'm asking us as uh, people in the business to tell us what oh, you I think you might be able to do. Azalea? Azalea? I have a really good example. I showed a restaurant. It's, it was fine dining. And I was blown away what, by what this French lady did. So on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, it was her slowest days. And Tuesdays, she had medical reps come in. And the medical reps would um, bring their doctors. So she... Like she had a prefixed menu for the medical reps to bring their doctors. And then on Wednesdays, she brought in the medical reps to do presentations. And it was $75. It included a glass of wine. Um, and they had a little separate room where there would be um, five doctors and the medical rep doing her presentation. So on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, she made money different ways, either one-on-one -on -one with your doctor or come use my private room and do presentations. And prefix menu, $75, including a glass of wine, but she had constant business Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which was her slowest day. I thought, And there was fine dining. It was a French restaurant. I thought that was really innovative. Maybe that helps our, our lady there. What's, what's good about that is she, she may not make as much money uh, Bottom line, but she's keeping her staff busy. Keep, keeping yeah. them, they're still getting the, their tips. And the doctor that came and enjoyed your your French restaurant is going to come on the weekends with his family. Absolutely, he just exposed them to something. I mean, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't thirty dollars dinners, you know. So I thought that was pretty innovative. I I really liked that. No, that's, that's great. Kind of that's great. That's a great suggestion. <laughs> I wanted to add, I think, I think that uh, I've seen a lot of times on uh, Facebook, I get stuff where they're doing seminars all the time at like Miss Crisp and, and Morton's and all those kind of things. That's a great idea. Okay. John? Yeah. The, the number one rule is do not run any kind of specials because if you do that, you're going to cheapen the brand when you have yeah. a higher end item. Yeah. What you're saying is 100% correct that uh, you can look for business in those areas. My question would be, is she open for lunch at all? It, was that saying she was open for lunch, Howard? I'm, I'm sorry, say it again? Is she open for lunch? I don't know. Okay, because then what she could do is she could define a lunch type menu, which would be completely different than the dinner menu, but still roll in the um, same items, let's say, in a different form. And then you could you could make up money in the afternoons by having a lower, you know, lower value uh, lunch menu. And then what you could also do is you can also run not specials, but you can have uh, featured items on certain nights. And that's going to start drawing people in. And those items can be lowered, uh, let's say like a prime rib that could still be at $38 by the time you're done with the glass of wine, this or that, you're going to still be over your 50 or, or you could actually hit lower. I think her price, her price point might be a little high for the people during the week. So that, that way she could lower right. her prices by having featured evenings. The Abe and Louis, which is a very high-end restaurant, one location in Boca, I think one in Massachusetts, they run a lunch. Uh, they have a hamburger for lunch at, uh, I think it's $18. Uh, 
And at night, it's probably, I don't know, 23, 22, something like that. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's not the way to do it. Because if you do that, people are going to feel like they got ripped off by going at lunchtime. Yes. So, yeah. Like at dinner time. So it sort of defeats your purpose. You want to have a different item that you're going to right, offer. Right, right. And it will also be, give you a chance to show off your, your culinary skills and your, your wide variety of items that you can have. And then when you roll into, let's say, the Christmas months and everything, uh, the holidays, if you want to call them that, but uh, you'll end up getting a lot of people that come there because they know that you have a wide variety. Right. And to add to that, John, if they do um, lunch portions, which are smaller plates than a dinner portion, that how, that's how you can lower the cost without cheapening your brand in the evenings. In addition to that, I do, I mean, I was just at a Ruth Chris event yesterday, um, you know, for, for a lunch and learn event, and those are very popular. So that's a great way to get people in and it's corporate money paying it. So you, you get an audience in. And then also there's often chambers of commerce and, um, networking groups like ours that are looking for places to meet. So to cater to those and, and reach out to those, you get a, a large captive group that comes in and establishes a regular schedule. So, so you know, that, that I agree with is a great idea. But what I was going to say is uh, right on that, that same line of thought, I belong to the greater Fort Lauderdale chamber of commerce. Um, I've been, I'm actually the chair of that leads group right now. We've been doing a lot of work and reaching out to local restaurants and local groups. And one of the restaurants, Fogo de Chao, just joined. And actually, we're going to do a site tour on uh, the 12th of March. So if you guys are in the area, you're more than welcome to come with us. Um, and so the caveat is, uh, for example, she gets to bring the entire group, which is like about 40 people. Um, and she's going to sponsor lunch. So we're going to get to try her food. So I actually got invited by her to one of the special events that they had. Um, I think it was a bourbon try, uh, bourbon tasting, something like that. We went there to, to taste the bourbon and the food was just so incredible that me and my boyfriend actually went back for dinner and the food was just equally as good. So chamber of commerce and networking groups and doing you know, uh, a special events um, like that bourbon tasting, they definitely work. It's a clever way of bringing people in and setting yourself apart because now I know that they have really fun special events in there. And I actually signed up for the website to get, get a new one when it's the, ne the next events. You know what, what restaurants fail to do? They fail to, to harvest their customers email address especially in the fine dining there should be a card on the table where you you fill out your name your email address and your birthday and once that's filled out and the management has it they can invite people to come back for their rest for their birthdays and offer them a free glass of wine or a free bottle of wine or whatever they want to do a free app you know bringing in a party with them and that it information part of their reservation process like if you want to reserve a table what's your name phone number and email address right yeah the key you know, programs too yeah it's because then they'll send you a text that your table's ready <clears throat> right yeah, VIP programs. Another thing that in a lot of fine dining places they do is they will store and cork your wines and et cetera for you for when you come back. So having like wine storage is another big thing in a fine dining place. Yeah, Morton's does that. If, if she really wants to uh, find different menu ideas and ways to hit that market that she's exactly in, I would really steer her toward Houston's restaurants. Look at them across the country. OK, and you look at their different locations, those people, they can do they do everything fresh every morning. They keep their food costs low. They have their service where it needs to be. Use them as a guide as to what you can set your menu at, because they spend so much money and so much time on perfecting that. And and just. Just take a look at it. If you ever get a chance to go to Houston's, uh, go go to Houston's, give it a shot and see if you can 
tick off a waitress or something. I doubt you're going to do it. It's like the Chick-fil-A kids, you know, you can't tick them off. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, but it, a... it's got good menu items that they, that they, she can use. Okay, anybody else have any suggestions? Come uh, on, so, some of the some of the uh, answers that we that she got from the the group that she posted this on was uh, you know to go to local uh, influencers on online and have them write it up, etc. If, I mean, influencers are okay, but uh, she can do, do the same outreach herself, and it's not going to cost her anything. Right. Um, it it's so it's you know social media is the way to go now. That's like your local marketing and advertising. So she can do Facebook ads. She can do ads on Instagram, having even a TikTok. Uh, but just doing there there is several restaurants that I follow that they feature their 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 dishes and they just look so scrumptious that I've actually gone into the restaurants because the way that I do it is that whenever me and my friends want to get together, we want to go, we, we usually like to um, try new places. So I have a, a whole list of places that I, that I follow that I like to try that I've been to, or that I want to go to with my friends. And that also helps me from whenever, you know, there's people in town that don't know, places i recommend them to those places because i've been there so social media is a huge advantage right now yeah you're right that's the first place everybody goes to it's either yelp open table for reviews even their website even facebook even uh next door the the, the website next door if you want to go someplace local that's a great avenue um it, it, it's social media they're not going to lie they're not going to tell you something's bad if it's not like the person but that doesn't usually happen um yeah definitely social media <laughs> got right up there okay. i want to add i want to add one, one more thing as well um you know as obviously if it's a high-end place there's going to be people that have uh, you know, a higher end job, obviously they can afford it. So that getting, as you get to know your uh, client tell there, you know, you can, there's always the discussion at the table thing, the owner, manager, you know, find out a little bit about them. And then you have, and then you get to know what may, there's so many industries that do presentations and want to do presentations. And so you have that opportunity to open the door there. Um, I've been to uh, retirement seminars. I've been to financial investment seminars. I've been to so many different types of seminars at restaurants. It's a great opportunity just, you know, as you uh, connect with your clientele, you know, to open the door there. Not huge numbers, obviously, but if you get, I mean, even one, you know, you're going to get more and more. Right. All right. Uh, well, I think we've reached the end of our uh, a lot of time. I want to thank you all for coming and thank you for the suggestions. Uh, I'll put this all together and post it on our Monday morning e blast and uh, on social media. And, uh, if anybody would like to get in touch with us and join us, and I encourage everybody here to, to uh, reach out to their connections in the industry and invite them to come to the meeting. Terry Ark, I did invite the people that you told me to. Uh, and, and they haven't shown up yet. No. <laughs> but and if that's, anybody that's would like to, yesterday. give that's us a yesterday. call at 561 620 888 or go to our website at trnusa.com and don't forget to check us out on YouTube uh, today's restaurant and subscribe and like so that we can get more people who can see it and uh, have a great weekend stay safe and let the sauce be with you <laughs>